Hey all, here is my top 6 highly effective opening traps that lead to a quick checkmate. They work both against beginners and more advanced level opponents, let's get right into it. And the first trap works against the Dutch defense, which is kind of like the mirrored Sicilian defense. Here you play pawn h3, an obscure move, preparing pawn g4. They play knight f6 to stop it, but you do play pawn g4 anyway. You keep playing dumb moves, seemingly dumb moves, violating all of the classical opening rules. You don't develop, you don't try to fight for the center. You place a weird attack on the side, sacrifice the pawn over here. And it's hard to believe that getting this pawn for black is actually a bad mistake. And yet it is the case. So here we go, queen to d3 attacking this pawn twice. Now our queen and rook attacks it. And after black naturally defends it with knight f6, we do ignore black once again and we take there anyway, attacking the rook. And after black captures it with either knight or a, a, or, or a rook, we go queen to g6, checkmate. And now it's time for black to have some fun. After pawn e4, pawn e5, if we go into the two knights game here, white goes knight g5, hoping for the fried liver attack. Now the usual move is pawn d5 for black, but instead you can shock your opponent with the move knight takes e4. And very often this move catches your opponents off guard, it looks completely, completely obscure, you allow white to capture over here or with either knight or bishop or to win the knight, but actually it's a lot trickier than that. White cannot easily win the knight over here because pawn d5 and you get it back very often with a favorable position. Very often your pawns take here, hoping that it just wins the game on the spot because it's a fork to the queen and the rook, but you play queen h4, threatening checkmate, and it gives you a very, very strong attack. Again, it's hard to figure out for why what to do here, and in most of the variations, you just win. Um, I actually have a separate video about this, if you want to check it out, you know, different options and to know what to do here. Just to show you one example, for example, if white goes pawn to g3, you can sack the knight over here, taking advantage of the pin, white can't move the pawn from this file, they would lose the rook. If they take it with the other pawn, let's take it back, then your queen, goes here to e4 with a double attack to the king and rook, thus winning the rook and continuing your attack and white is defenseless. They can't play king f2 to defend the rook that way, because then you play the bishop to c5 and you force the king to move back anyway. After that, this rook is no longer defended by white's queen, therefore queen takes h1, you take the rook, you keep attacking, after that you pick up everything literally, and uh, you know king can't come back because queen f2 would be a checkmate so it has to go forward and here we've got a dancing queen versus a dancing king but of course it's gonna be in black's favor and here you have different ways to win just keep checking the king for example a fun line like this where white's king decided to take a lead of his army but the fortune not always favors the bold in the third trap, we actually use a similar bait. We're ready to sacrifice our rook. Still, in this uh, two knights game, we go pawn d5, pawn takes, and now we're going knight to d4. In this case, why will want to renew their threat to this pawn on f7 and play pawn to d6? This way, they're opening up for this attack, but you ignore it and just take this pawn. Now, white happily captures this pawn, hoping for that it forks the queen and the rook, and at least this time they're gonna win. You play queen to c6, and strangely enough, white actually loses. Their bishop is attacked, their pawn on g2 is attacked, and indirectly the rook as well, and the bishop can't easily go, because it has to guard this knight on f7 just as well, and white simply cannot defend all that. Then, at least they grab the rook, hoping that, well, at least I'm gonna win something, then queen takes g2, threatening to win the rook, therefore they move it to f1, you play back queen to e4, check to the king, notice that our knight controls this square, therefore they can't cover with the queen, they have to play bishop e2, and although white made their best effort to surround their king with defenders, we finish it off with a nice smother checkmate. This time we're playing white, let's start with e4, e5, knight 3 knight c6, all the standard stuff, but after that we go into the Ponziani opening, pawn to c3, preparing pawn d4, uh, they go knight f6, we still play pawn to d4, and of course they could take here, but very often they don't because they are worried that you can push the pawn forward and attack the knight. Therefore instead they often take over here, thinking that you're gonna recapture, but you can play pawn d5, kicking this knight away. When it goes away, you can now take this pawn on e5. And here there is a relatively well-known trap. Very often if they try to get rid of your knight and develop and play pawn d6, there is actually a big upset. Bishop to b5, check to the king, and in order to cover like half 
to sacrifice a lot of material, so that's bad for black. That's the first trap over here. So if they figure out that d6 is wrong, they may decide to develop their pieces the other way and move this knight away because it blocks, you know, the normal development of other pieces, so knight to g6 could be played. And now there is a really nice tricky move, bishop to d3. At first it looks like you just are offering an exchange of knights. Black's gonna take this one, you're gonna take this one with an equal game. But your opponent may decide to play smart and may think to himself, hey, if this knight is a gunner, let me at least get a pawn for it. And so, you know, I'm getting a better trade. I'm getting a, a knight and a pawn against a knight. So they hope that you recapture here and they recapture, you know, your knight, get in a winning position. But instead, you play the bishop takes g6. You're ready to sacrifice your queen and they have nothing to do but to take it anyway, otherwise they're down material. And if knight takes d1, bishop takes f7, strangely enough, you rush into this quick attack against black's king. King has to go forward, now knight to c4, check to the king once again, king goes forward to c5, and although you could take the queen, but, you know, when your opponent's king is so advanced and so exposed, you gotta be acting like Magnus Carlsen using Tinder, you gotta check for potential mates, and the way to go is knight to a3, locking the king over there so it can't move, also supporting the other knight on c4, and after black plays something, something let's say queen takes g5, you play a beautiful pawn, to b4 with a checkmate. And the next one is my favorite opening for black against e4. Here after bishop c4, you can go for f5, a very rare Russo gambit which has crazy success rate. Uh, again, I've got a dedicated video about this if you want to dive deeper into it. For now, let me just show you one of the main lines here. If white captures, and they usually do, you play pawn e4. And then suddenly white realizes that their knight has nowhere to go. You know, because these squares are taken away by your queen, those squares are taken away by your knight, and therefore the knight really has to go back to g1, probably. That's how your opponents think about it. They're not optimistic about undeveloping their knight, and they may wish to play queen e2 to pin your opponent, maybe hoping to win it. But you do play queen e7, unpin your pawn, now the threat is real, they have to go back knight to g1. Now you play knight f6, and white once again wants to develop their sad knight somehow, and for that, this pawn on e4 is annoying, right? It blocks their development, so they may wish to play out pawn d3, hoping to trade this pawn out, maybe trade queens off, and at least finish their development somehow. But then you go knight to d4, queen has to go, and at this position you have a brilliant combo. Starts off with knight takes c2, sacrificing the knight, and white has to capture it, because if not, you're gonna win the rook with this fork. Queen takes, and now pawn takes d3 is a very strange and unusual discovered attack where you win an opponent's queen. Again, if you love this opening, I've got another video where I cover it in greater details. And here comes the final checkmating trap for today, which works in the classical variation of the Sicilian defense. Here, after knight of 6 attacking your pawn, you defend it, and if black goes pawn e5, oh no, that's not the classical, that's the Sveshnikov variation. After knight b5 and pawn d6, anyway, it's a very common chess opening variation of the Sicilian defense, lots of top players played. And here you can go knight d5. And now your both knights are threatening knight to c7, forking the king and the rook, therefore black has to trade it. Now pawn takes, attacking this knight, now the knight has to go, and here you play the move pawn to c4. It looks like you're just playing a pawn move to solidify your center, something like that. Very often your opponents are feeling annoying about this knight on b5, and they want to just get rid of it, so they play pawn a6. Very standard move, right? Black plays like that in lots of different opening variations, for example, in the rattle pass against your bishop over there on b5. But in this case, it's actually a losing mistake, because instead of moving your knight, you move your queen out, and it turns out that the pawn is pinned, it cannot move, cannot capture your knight, because then they lose the rook. Then they realize that, besides that, the queen is also setting it up for some discover check, something like knight to c7, you know, discover check. So they wish to naturally close the weak diagonal by playing bishop to d7, moreover, they are thinking that they over-tricked you, now this knight is pinned, so it cannot go, and finally on the next move they can just win it, and it's all good with just one little detail. You can play knight takes d6, checkmate. And here comes our puzzle of the day. It is white to play and win, and if you can find the winning shot, please write it down in the comments below. This position actually occurred in the real game between Andrekin and uh, Karyakin, so you can try your chance and play like a strong grandmaster. Now, of course, you can't always win with an opening trap, and if you do want to know how to become a stronger chess player and what is the best way to improve a chess instantly, then you're welcome to attend my free masterclass where I'm teaching you just that. Keep crushing it. Ciao.